So previously we talked about decision making under uncertainty. That means you do not know the probabilities for possible outcomes. Now we're going to move on to the next one, decision making under risk, which means that you know the probabilities of the possible outcomes. Now that you have the probabilities of the possible outcomes, you can make decision based on something called expected monetary value or in short EMV or simply EV essentially it's the expected value we talked about previously so EMV for an alternative or an option a possible option of a decision is simply the payoff of every possible outcomes times their corresponding probability and you simply edit them up so it's a sum of payoff times corresponding probability so you can see from this definition it's essentially the same as EV so going forward we're going to call it EMV or sometimes I'll just call it EV now let's look at an example the Thompson Lumber Company again now suppose that each market outcome has a probability of occurrence of 0 0.5 then which alternative will give the highest EMV highest EMV means the highest profit and therefore it's more the most favorable one so for each alternative here we can calculate their corresponding EMV which is simply the payoff the profit times their probability and add an up so it's two hundred thousand dollars times the probability 0 0.5 plus minus hundred and eighty thousand dollars times 0 0.5 add an up you get ten thousand dollars you do the same for the second alternative you get an EMV of forty thousand and for the third option you still calculate the EMV turns out to be zero so apparently from here the option that gives the highest EMV is to build a small plant and therefore we conclude that the company should build a small plant now I would like to introduce another term to you expected value of perfect information or simply EVPI so EVPI essentially tells you how much you should pay at most for additional information we're making decision on the risk we don't like risk there are many organizations or opportunities out there that can give you additional information about the uncertainty to improve your quality of decision but they usually come at cost so EVPI tells you how much you should pay at most for those additional information EVPI has a formula here it's simply the difference between something called EVWPI and the maximum EMV from all of the alternatives the second term we have shown you how to derive that in the previous example so the first term EV WPI what it is well essentially is a long run average return if you have the perfect information before you make the decision it has a formula over here essentially it's a sum of the best payoff in each possible outcome times the probability of that possible outcome here's an example there's a company called scientific marketing it is able to tell Thompson Lumber Company whether the market will turn out to be favorable or unfavorable immediately before it decides to build a plant or not. However, this service costs Thompson Lumber Company $65,000. So should Thompson Lumber Company purchase this information? How are we going to answer that question? Well, we're going to calculate the EVPI the expected value of perfect information it will tell you how much the value this additional information is then we compare the EVPI to the cost if the EVPI is higher than cost that means the value of, of information is higher than the cost then yes we purchase the information otherwise we don't and now in this table I summarize all the information we need I also list the EMV we calculated for each op option previously. Now, to find out the EV WPI, the EV with perfect information, first we find the best payoff in each possible outcome. 
When the market is favorable, the best outcome is to build a large plane, which give you $200,000. So that's the best outcome in the favorable market. Likewise, in the unfavorable market, what is the highest payoff we get? It's zero. So that's the first step, the highest payoff in each possible outcome. Second step, we multiply those numbers with the probability of each of those possible outcomes and add them up. In other words, we do $200,000 times 0 0.5 plus 0 times 0 0.5, which give you um, $100,000. And that is our EV with perfect information. Now we are ready to find out what is the EVPI. First, we observe that the maximum EMV without additional information is $40,000. This is the payoff when you make the decision before knowing whether the market is favorable or not. We also have this equation for EVPI. The first term is the EV with perfect information. That is a payoff you would get if you make the decision after knowing whether the market is favorable or not. The second term, on the other hand, is your payoff when you make the decision before knowing whether the market is favorable or not. So the difference tells you the value of having additional information, which turns out to be $60,000. So the maximum Thompson should pay for additional information is this amount. Unfortunately, it's smaller than the cost, so we conclude that Thompson should not pay for this service. The previous example shows you how to make a decision based on EMV. Sometimes you choose the alternative with the highest EMV, sometimes you choose the one with the lowest EMV. It really depends on the context. For example, if your payoffs are costs and you try to minimize cost, then you choose the alternative with the lowest EMV. Or just like we saw in the previous example, my goal was to mi maximize profit so I choose the alternative giving me the highest EMV. In the previous example, we can actually make the decision based on the expected opportunity loss or EOL. Conceptually, that means instead of finding the alternative that generates the highest profit, let's find the one that gives the lowest cost. To do that, first we need to build an opportunity loss table and then find the expected opportunity loss for each alternative. We'll choose the alternative with the lowest expected opportunity loss. I'll show you that process in the next slide. You will find that maximizing EMV and this new method of minimizing EOL will yield the same decision. So it does not really matter which way you choose. You can just choose the one that you feel more comfortable with. Let's see how we can make the decision for Thompson Company by minimizing EOL. First, we construct this opportunity loss table. We talked about how to generate this table previously. You can check out the video on the minimax regret criterion in making decision under uncertainty for detail. Let's first find the expected opportunity loss for each alternative. For the large plant, it's simply adding out the opportunity loss in each possible outcome times their corresponding prob probabilities. So, for example, for constructing a large plane, it'll be simply zero times its probability plus $180,000 times its probability. So, turns out to be $90,000. So that is your EOL in the alternative. We can do the same for all of the other options. And then we're going to choose the alternative with the smallest EOL. Apparently, constructing a small plane has the smallest EOL, so that's our decision. You can find that minimizing EOL and maximizing EMV both give the same decision. 